trying to do this video for a little while here and I just haven't uh, quite got it put together so this video is going to be a tour video of uh, my garden and it might look like nothing's going on in here right now. I bet you'll be surprised at some of the things that I have growing in this garden right now. Today is May the 4th. Um, we started off quite cold in April and it warmed right up about mid-April and uh, I've been just uh, raring to get going out here. Usually we would still have snow till part way into April. We didn't have any at all this April, so it's been uh, been deceiving on where we are in the year. But anyway, so I took some clips for most of what I did here, so uh, I'll intersperse those in with what, what I'm doing now, and um, I'll try and get the dates of uh, when everything got planted. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I do have it written down, I think, everything. So I'll try and get that uh, put in the video for you too and uh, just give you a little look at what I'm doing here in my zone 3 garden Saskatchewan Canada so come check out what I'm growing first thing I'm gonna do is back you right out here so you can get a look at some things a bit more so um, I have eight raised beds in this garden six of them are four by eight and then I have two over against that fence there that are two by eight. And uh, as you can see, many of them have covers on them right now. So as we go through, I'll, I'll lift the covers up so you can get a look. My beds are numbered one to eight. Um, number one starts down in the far side here, two, three, four, and it goes across like that. So I think that's how I'll show you what's growing. So let's go over to bed number one. So I just have a, a net on here. I've already seen some flea beetles and I actually saw what appeared to be a, um, a cabbage white butterfly moth thing already. So I tried to cover some things up here. So the lighting here is always a little bit funny. In the morning, um, the fence shades this bed. It's kind of an northeast kind of direction there and uh, unfortunately you're gonna get some shade in these couple of beds here but the wind is supposed to get really high again this afternoon which has been part of my issue with with getting this done so I'm just gonna get out here and try and get it going so hopefully you can see all this in the front part of the bed. The bigger plants there are broccoli starts that I put out. I started those earlier on indoors and then I had them out in my greenhouse and then I got them put out in the garden and if you can see the little tiny things there along there and down the next row that's two types of turnip. They're just, just getting going and then I don't know if you can see the little wispy things at the back there but that's some of my onion sets that I put out not sets um they were from seed that I started indoors and I just have a little row of those across the back there so that's what's in bed number one I'm going to cover it back up so I don't forget and then we'll move on Okay, so bed number two. So again, this bed is a little bit um, in the shadows. So hopefully you can have a look. There's not a whole lot to look at there. Right down in the center there, there's some spinach and you can see it all coming up quite nicely there. And as you can see by the stake, there's kale planted behind it. Um, none of that has come up yet. And then on the sides, have, I believe it's Binti potatoes planted on the far end and blue Russian on the end closer to us here. And then in the middle at the back, I'm just going to put, um, I have just a few seeds left of a variety of corn I'm trying to get uh, started in the greenhouse. And as long as those come up for me, they'll go in that back little area. So it's going to be a pretty packed bed, but that stuff should all work there well together. Here's bed three. 
And as you can see, it's covered by fleece, so I'll just lift that off and then we can have a look. I think this was one of the first beds that I planted out this year. And there's five cabbage at the this end closest to us here. And then there's, uh, I believe, five, yeah, five cauliflower at the back. The cauliflower is a little bit smaller, and uh, we had a few cold nights right after I put it out, and I maybe didn't harden it off well enough, so there's a few there that are looking a little bit rough. But um, I think they'll be all right there, so we'll just, just leave them there to, to see how they do. So that's what I have in that bed for now. Um, I have more starts and I'll probably put a few more in there. And I have some flowers that I think I'll try and stick in there as well. Not sure what else is going to go in there right now. We'll see how it goes. That might be enough. Not sure how big some of these plants are going to get. So we're still getting down occasionally to freezing, more often just to near freezing and uh, the, the fabric, the harvest guard on there just helps a little bit, a few degrees of uh, warmth in there and uh, it uh, protects from insects and things. Hopefully it's keeping, you know, the flea beetles and things off of the, the brassicas there. So I'm going to turn you around again and uh, we'll look at bed four. So this bed is looking pretty much empty. Um, everything that went into here was seeded. And I'm actually going to bring you in a little bit closer and just have a look at some of the things I've seeded here. I had radish planted along here and I swear someone's coming up. And I don't know if something ate it down before I got out there, but it was just starting to peek through and now there's maybe one one little radish there now I don't know if you saw that there it is right there so might be oh, I've got a lot of these these weeds here that are coming up but I'm not sure what happened there something munch them down or if watering kind of covered them over yet yeah, look at that one there where's my finger you can see that one there so that one was coming up and the top's been eaten right off so I'm gonna have to figure something out with that because they appear to be getting eaten under this wood here is some parsnips I just planted and I don't think anything's coming up there yet but the wood is supposed to help kind of just keep them nice and moist there and uh, protect them from getting eaten off. I've never done that before it's something I'm trying. One of my first crops to go in that I always like to try and get a few of is peas. I try and get them in as early as possible and just hope for the best. Hey Buster. Um, the soil wasn't super warm when I put them in, but um, there's a few coming up here and my plan with the peas is to... <laughs> Buster, you're in my shot. The plan with the peas is to do um, four rows and I'll just succession plant them. So this one came up, you can see pea, pea, they're coming along there, but they seem to be mostly in the middle of the row coming up and not so much down at the ends. So we'll have to, to maybe replant a few of those. There's beets along this edge right here and they've come up really well and 
there's two kinds so they're all the way along this edge here so that's what's in this garden for right now let's go check out bed number five okay so here's bed number five and you can see it's all swallowed up pretty tight there and uh, I think you'll be surprised at what I have growing in there so let me open it up a little bit for you and uh, you can have a, a look at what I have going in there Give you a quick look at the thermometer I had under there. Um, I don't know how well you can. Oh, I don't know how well you can see that there, but I'm not really good at my conversions there. But I'm guessing it's about 15 or more degrees Celsius in there, and 62 or so Fahrenheit. It's just for reference, uh, 11 Celsius outside right now, and I think we got down to four or five last night. So anyways, let's see what I have covered up in there so well. Tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes. I believe I have 22 tomato plants in here. They've been in here for a few days. I think three or four now. We'll have to look. I don't know how well you can see that in there, but uh, you wouldn't know that we uh, are, what, two and a half weeks before our last frost date here. Tomatoes are happy. These are all my, like, uh, paste and slicer type tomatoes in here. So I have six varieties. There's three or four of each variety. And look at them. They're so happy. So I don't know if you're familiar with this, this uh, product that I have on here. Some of these are called cozy coats, the red ones I believe. And the green ones, I believe, are wall of water. And they just hold in all these tubes. All together, each of these holds, I think it's about four gallons of water. Uh, I think that's 16 liters, something like that. And that water just helps uh, trap the heat when the sun's shining. And then it gives off the heat as the water cools down. These can be completely frozen. The plants can be fine inside. This is the earliest I've ever put the tomatoes out. Um, I don't normally put the extra layer on, but because it is still getting so cold out at night, I've, uh, I've popped that on as well just to, to hold the heat down and I don't have enough of the protection to go down the center row, but they're between all the cozy coats. I actually have a jug of water at either end and it seems to be working, so. I love these. I believe these are the Japanese black trefelli tomato and look they have that potato leaf. And I've seen other people's videos and they talk about the tomato the potato leaf varieties of tomatoes, but um, until you see it um, in your own garden, your own plantings, it's like man, they really are different looking. Try and get you a shot of a regular leaf without my shadow in it. So that's a regular leaf with all the notching, and then there's those potato leaves. Kind of a neat looking tomato. First year I've grown those, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they turn out. But it's chilly out today, a little chilly for tomatoes, so I'm going to get these covered up and then we can uh, move on. Okay, so what are we at here? Bed number six. So the first thing you might notice is tulips in this bed. Um, I don't know where they came from. I dumped pots out every year. I collected leaves. I had uh, my father-in-law's neighbor gave me some bags of his uh, leaves and it had a little bit of extra garden detritus in it. So 
that I know was a bit be uh, a bag that was dumped on this bed so I'm not sure if I got these tulips from there or not I also have some sort of what I think must be some sort of a shrubby weed coming up in here I've been pulling a lot of this out I've never seen this before so I'm guessing it came out of that bag um, and then I have onions planted on either side of the center row here. Those are just from the onions I started from seed this year. And then I have some broccoli plants. So there's four broccoli plants and then in the back there, there's some uh, Brussels sprouts. I've never grown Brussels sprouts before, so hopefully they turn out well. In the very front I have some pok choy coming along there. two rows of those and they both seem to be coming in nicely just across the front and then there's supposed to be kale down at the ends here and oh, the sun's kind of glaring here but I think I'm not sure if that's the kale or the pok choy coming there but that should be kale right in that area there so hopefully I have that there I just have the netting on it just again to try and keep um, any critters that think they want to munch on this stuff out of there. So I'll get it covered back up and we'll, we'll move on. We're almost done. This is just netting on this one. There's no, no heat, I don't think, being held in by it. Okay, so this here is bed number seven and I've had it covered up just to to get it heated up a little bit but I think today's the day it's just gonna have the cover come off it doesn't really need any more so I'll just be removing this cover altogether let's start down at the far end far end of this bed because that's uh, what got planted first in here hopefully you'll be able to see what's coming up in here just barely I was getting a little worried and I shouldn't be because it's still early, but I was getting a little worried because my garlic was doing nothing, but I don't know how well you can see, but it's starting to poke through here. So this end here is the garlic I had saved from what I grew last year. And then I have a few more that aren't coming up yet that I purchased. I can't even remember. I want to say at a box store or something. Uh, those ones aren't coming up yet, um, but hopefully they make an appearance soon but the really the it's just been this last week that the uh, beds have been really thawed down I think to soil level now and I have the water going on them which helps so if we go across should be able to see there onions so more onions in this bed um, Hopefully you can see those. So I think I have three, three rows of onions going there. Maybe just two. There's carrots supposed to be planted along the, the back outside edges of these beds. And then in, in along here. And it looks like there's some coming up in that one row. So it looks. I don't know how well you can see those, but it looks like there's a few little carrots coming along in a row there. Really tiny. There's a lot of weeds in this bed too. So it looks like the one row of carrots is coming in good. And it looks like I might have another one that is. My shadow will probably be in the way to show you that one. It looks like there's carrots coming along there. I don't know how well you can pick them up there, but there, there. They're coming in a pretty even row there, so and they're nice, that nice fine look of a carrot. So I think that's what we have going there. Again, weeds. Just waiting to get some of these beds mulched. There's a tomato. 
I don't see any carrots here. I wasn't getting a real good consistent so, uh, moisture to these, so I think a lot of the carrots I planted aren't. They're gonna have to be redone, but that's okay. Real quick on bed number eight here is this entire bed is planted in red Norland potatoes. And then I've mulched it with the leaves. And obviously in front here is not red Norland potatoes, but I had some lettuce started and I decided to just stick it out here now. Lettuce doesn't always, it, it'll take the cold, but it just kind of sits there. So I may regret doing this, but there's a, uh, Grand Rapids and you can see like the the start dates they are started in the house prize head Ruby Barilla um, Red salad bowl and I can't remember What are you oh? This is early curled Simpson at the end there, so the only other thing I have planted is I have a lot of uh, bags and pots of potatoes out here and I've just kind of piled them up here because I will uh, tap into that water spigot and I will run a dripper to each of these pots and um, they'll have some water I don't have to remember to water them so I have what do I have in here I have one pot of red Norland and then the rest are all Caribe and it's just a real assortment of pots going here. Some of them are fabric pots that I've made out of landscape fabric. Some are kind of burlap bags that uh, I'd purchased at a dollar store. And then this is actually an old dog food bag I've just turned inside out. Put a couple slits down near the bottom. Hopefully it drains enough, it holds up. I'm not sure how that'll do, but worth a try. These are the bags of uh, Lancer Delicatesse potatoes. I have two sitting outside. And then the others are inside. And it doesn't really look like anything's happening. But I have had a little poke through them. And the potatoes are, are sprouting in there, so they are growing and doing well. There's what's left out in the greenhouse to go out. Lots of flowers, so they'll be getting put in later. And then these pots have nothing, nothing planted in them yet. These are going to be all squash and um, watermelon and cantaloupe out here. Here's my winter sowing. I'm not sure what I think of this yet. Cleome. Nothing. Blazing Meadow Star. I don't know how you can see there is some sprouts started in there. I can't get that one open yet. Most of the tape came off of these. Uh, this is a dwarf milkweed. It's just started to come up this week. I'll give you an idea how cold it is out still. This is, what is this? Uh, three flower avens. A few sprouts there. That was from seed I purchased. Uh, here's some three flower avens from seed I collected. About the same spot. This is bearberry I just planted out this way. There's one tiny little green guy there. Whether it's actually a bearberry or not, I don't know. The other seed is still cold stratifying in my refrigerator for that. This is alum root and nothing. I dropped this one a couple times, so I'm not sure how it's going to do. And lupin, I have, looks like three, three lupin going there. I don't know how healthy they look. So, so that's what my garden's looking like early May. In order to get a lot of these plants growing, I've had to have protection out. I use the plastic covers to heat the soil up uh, in these raised beds. Just um, even a week ago down, you know, six inches was still frozen. So gives you an idea what we're working with here. But with a little bit of uh, planning and foresight, you can get things warmed up and get some things going a little bit earlier. Um, I really don't know if it makes a difference in uh, 
my harvest because I mean a lot of these things are are still gonna just kind of sit here but it cures that itch for me to get out in the garden so if you've made it through this long of the video thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye